Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Happy New Year's, by the way. I have a beautiful tagging that I am going to make some, uh, basically we're going to make cabbage roll. And I had this soaking in water, and then we're going to put this in the oven and with our little rolls that we're going to make, and that is going to be part of our dinner. So before I do anything with that, we have some Napa cabbage. And I prefer the Napa cabbage for the reason that it is a little softer and easier to work with. But instead of boiling this, what I am going to do, I'm going to save the bottom part of the stems and just use the top parts. Now, if the leaves are small, you could always do more than one leaf at a time. And then you could... Even three leaves is good, and then you can roll your stuffing. But for now, what I'm going to do is soften these up. So I am going to take some of these leaves, lay it down, and I'm just going to sprinkle some salt. And don't be worried about the salt. You just want these to wilt down where it's going to be easier for you to be able to roll them. And whatever piece I'm taking off, I could always use it to make kimchi so it's not a waste for me and if you're not making kimchi uh, just cut them up and throw them in a soup in a in a stew whatever you're making you could take those butt ends and just incorporate incorporate them in a dish Okay, my tagine is not the biggest, so I'm not going to be using too many leaves. Okay, so just as you lay them down. Now, like I said, you could boil these, but it's such a pain in the butt for me. I'd rather just salt them and then rinse them off. And if I have extra cabbage leaves that I salted and I'm not going to use, like I said, it's not a problem for me because I could just start a new kimchi. I've got one already going. And I bought this Napa cabbage for that reason. For a new kimchi. But Erica got a craving, and when Erica gets a craving, I don't mind satisfi satisfying her craving. There we go. Now, even this softens up, but it's just, if you're going to make a roll, it's better not to have too much of the bottom. It's just easier to be able to roll the top part. Usually, if I go to my favorite Asian market, their Napa cabbage is a lot bigger than the one that I have here. But we make do with what we have. Part there. We should be good. Okay, so that's it. We're going to salt it a little more. And when we come back, we should be nice and wilted for me. Then I have some leftover potatoes. That I'm going to incorporate. I'm going to make like a potato and cabbage. Except it's going to be part of the stuffing. And it's going to be that easy to make a delicious meal guys. So I'll see you in a bit. And I'm going to get a bowl. And I'm going to start salting my cabbage for kimchi. I have all these bits that I broke off the bottom. Okay, if I need more, I'm going to use more. I have a nice big jar in my fridge already of kimchi. But I'll show you how easy it is. Basically, you just want to salt. Salt your cabbage. 
cabbage. And it's going to wilt down for you. Almost like a sauerkraut. The only difference is that uh, we add other ingredients when we make our kimchi. If I have a little bit of rice, I use uh, the rice that I blend up with some apples and ginger. We make a delicious, delicious kimchi with that. And sauerkraut, basically, I keep it very simple. If you guys are interested in learning how I make kimchi, I have different recipes. I could share some of them with you. All you have to do is ask in the comment or message me and I promise you I will show you how I make my delicious kimchi. Okay, this is going to be a small batch, but good nonetheless. I could always, once I make this, I can mix it in with my other jar. So that's it. Salt, cabbage, and every once in a while you come here and you just flip it over. And it's going to lose a lot of water. It's just going to start pulling water out. And then we ferment this. Oop. Ferment this for a minimum, a minimum of three days, if not more. There we go. Put this aside. And that's how easy it is to make delicious, very beneficial, kimchi. That is good for your mind and your soul and especially your body. Okay. I'll show you what it looks like in a bit when this has been wilting down. Make some more homey. Hope you guys don't mind when I'm recording and if my daughter talks to me. It'll feel more like you're sitting here with us in our kitchen. Right, Erica? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there you go, guys. This is salting. We're going to check it in a bit. Like I said, for me, it's just an easier way of doing things. This way, it's just so much easier for me. And uh, it works just as good. I will put my tagine back into... Um, into the sink with some water my daughter this is how we got this craving i only have a tagine i'll show you what it looks like it's beautiful i love my tagine uh but my daughter got herself a beautiful earthware japanese earthware you want me to get it? uh if you don't mind and uh actually it was a gift for me to her for her birthday and uh but i told her she's not allowed to use it until her birthday <laughs> <laughs> or when she's cooking something for me at her house but um, yes I uh, got a craving to use my tagine today because of that beautiful beautiful pot what's it called Erica? a gimpo a donate donabe sorry if anybody knows um, I don't mean to I'm messing up the word I don't mean to but it is beautiful and here is it's a lot bigger than my tagine as you could tell and it has this beautiful beautiful lid and basically you use this no different than if you're going to use um oh yeah this, this is beautiful there it is it's very so big and she goes ma let's use it i says no this is your gift and you're going to use it after your birthday which is coming up in a couple of days and uh, and when you cook something for me in your home so right now we're just gonna look at it beautiful beautiful earthwork and this is used no different than if you're gonna use a pot on your stove or in your oven the best part about these I think they could also go into a microwave if you like using that we don't use the microwave for cooking because we believe that whatever goes in the microwave comes out dead so we're not gonna use this in a microwave but you can use it 
on the stove, electric stove, gas stove, in the oven. Uh, they're just so beautiful. And not only do you cook in it, then it goes straight onto your table. So because of this beautiful pot, here you go, Erica. Thank oh you for God. sharing that. I love it. She can't wait to use it. I figured I was going to pull out my old tagine. And this is more of a dome, which also has its own little magic. Uh, but we're going to make a whole bunch of little um, cabbage rolls. And that will be part of our dinner. Maybe have a nice big salad with it. Eat simple, light, and very little. Uh, you don't have to put a lot of fat if you don't want to when you make this dish. You could put just a little bit of olive oil. Some nice uh, chopped tomato. And that's going to bake in the oven. And because it's made the way it's made, it's going to keep all the moisture in there. And it's just going to be delicious. So that's where my craving, our craving actually, not just mine, came from this. And now, like I said, because my cabbage isn't the biggest cabbage, the leaves aren't as big. The rolls won't be as big. But as you can tell, this is already starting to wilt. Uh, the rolls won't be as big, but you know what? That's going to be okay too. You see how everything is starting to wilt? It's going to be a lot easier. Even this, when this can bend back and not snap, you know that it's done. It's magic. And that's the same thing, same system if you're making kimchi. When the crunchy part is able to bend back and not snap, you know it's time to uh, dress your your kimchi by adding some ingredients this one here we're gonna stuff them but I could only stuff them till I defrost okay guys so we have some leftover potatoes that we are gonna use we have some leftover beans we're gonna use we have some delicious oyster mushrooms I'm um, like right up in your face again eh okay beautiful oyster mushrooms and we have some beautiful eggplant which I will okay don't get scared I have potatoes cooking in that and yesterday I didn't get a chance to wash it so I am going to use it I am going to use it to cook everything up again so I am just going to cut up some vegetables I'm going to put this aside. I know you won't see my pot, but I'll show you what it looks like at the end. For now, I am going to cut some of the potatoes. Okay, now you can either remove the skin or as much as you can. Let me just get a small knife. Okay. My husband used to cut off the tips of the knives when my kids were small because he didn't want them accidentally hurting themselves. Okay, so we have one this nice big potato here. These are potatoes that we just cut in half. We threw some steak spice at the bottom of my cast iron, a drizzle of olive oil, and we put the potatoes face down and that was part of our dinner yesterday okay now i'm putting a couple of sausages that i'm going to cut up because my husband loves his sausage he used to love it when he was vegan when he wasn't vegan, sorry. Now that he's vegan, he eats whatever sausage I make or buy if I don't have time to make. Or if I don't have any at all made, then I would use beautiful white beans. It doesn't have to be white. It could be any color beans. That's what I would have used in this one dish. And I just want to show you. I don't want to get them dirty with my hands, but you can see that they are starting to wilt down. All right, let's do this thing. Okay, 
let's start off with this. We don't want the pieces too big because my cabbage isn't very wide. And if the pieces of my potatoes are too big, then what happens is my cabbage sheaths might break. And once you reheat these and cook them with the other stuff, it's going to break up even more. Almost like a mashed, but not really mashed. You can mash them if you want. And then just mix your ingredients with the mashed. Okay, just little bits. And into my pan that I'm going to use olive oil in. Beautiful olive oil. Do that after so you can see it. Okay. Plus, I have a new cheese, new cheese recipe I'm going to be sharing with you guys as soon as I get a chance. I am dedicating this cheese to my beloved friend, Richard. Uh, he's been there with me since the beginning. Always very supportive. And uh, I named that cheese after him. Because I used some of the ingredients that he sent me. He gave me some beautiful truffles. And he says to me, Connie, how about if you use this item? Will it work in a cheese? How about if you used this one item? Do you think it would make a good cheese? Well, guess what, Richard? I used it. And my daughter can't stop eating it. So we're calling it the row cheese. And it's dedicated to you, my friend. Really, really delicious. We're making cabbage and potato a different way. As long as I don't put any fingers in my meal, that would be great. Cabbage, potatoes, and Connie's fingers. That would be traumatizing. <laughs> Ma, what did you put in this dinner? Yeah, you can use anything. If you don't want to use any seitan, uh, you can use beans, you can use tempeh, tofu, whatever your heart desires. Okay, so let me just wipe this down. Okay, we're going to cut some eggplant. And you know, eggplant is another ingredient that is very meaty to the taste. So for vegans, it's a perfect... We are fighting the eggplant. Okay, here we go. There we go. Go across it. Want to get these pieces as small as you can. And if you don't like the skin of the eggplant, you can peel this off first. We don't mind it. Should I say I don't mind it? I never even asked my family if they did. Nobody's complained yet, so we're good. And if you don't want to put beans, you don't have to do that either. It could be just vegetables. All right. Once 
once you have everything prepared, then it takes a second to put them together. So you could do this all the preparing in the morning, cook it down, and then all you have to do is stuff your cabbage leaves and cook it and have it nice and hot for dinner. bit of beans that I have left over. It's going to go in. There we go. And the side. Look at that. Mm -hmm. oh. I am going to break. I'm going to cut up the broken pieces. And this, I'll leave it aside. Mushrooms is the future, guys. No more meat, not needed. You know, anybody that says, oh, you need meat to survive and to live and to be healthy, uh, that's not true. I can tell you for a fact that's not true. You know, just say you like to eat it. Don't make excuses for it. I know I'm going to get a little bit of hate over this, but it is what it is. I don't think you need to eat meat. My granddaughters are a prime example. Not only are they vegan, but they were conceived vegan. They are vegan. And they're stronger than you and I put together. are going to wilt down so it's going to be good. Yeah, Push this aside. I think we've got more than enough here. So this is our melange that we're going to cook down. Just a little bit of olive oil. We're going to add a little extra salt. Some Montreal steak spice. I'm going to put a drizzle of maple. We have some beautiful dark maple here. Not too much. You don't want it too sweet, right? Just a small drizzle, and we're going to cook this down. Chili flakes. When I don't have my granddaughters, we put some chili flakes. Okay, that's it. We're going to cook this down, and then we're going to stuff our beautiful cabbages with this. I make these, by the way. I love them. You just have to remember what you put in your wrapper, otherwise. You send somebody to the fridge and you say, where's the onion? Basically put whatever you like in your stuffing. But potatoes will be your base. There we go. I don't want to put too much on it. And the more they smash up, the better it is because you can actually put it 
in between your your cabbage. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna wrap this one up. This you can make with soy. Uh, you use soy wax, you use a little bit of coconut oil and cotton and then it works with the heat of your hands and you just wrap it up and it goes into the fridge. I have a little bit of mozzarella I've just made. Ah, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful mozzarella. I'll just show you what it looks like. Nice and stretchy. Look at that, guys. Mmm. Mmm. I have a recipe for this. I'll share it with you. Mmm. Delicious. The only thing is soft, so it's not grateable. But yes, you can still grate this. And I'll tell you how. Um, if you freeze it, then when you need it for pizza, you just grate it frozen right on your pizza. And you have delicious stretchy mozzarella. And the trick is this. I'll explain it to you one day. You see that? That's the magic for that mozzarella. But I'll show you another day. This is fermenting for a new batch. And this is gonna go in my mouth. I'm such a glutton. And this goes in the fridge. Delicious, delicious. Breaking down. I have it on low because if you have it on high, it's just going to stick on you because I'm not using a lot of oil. And we're just going to make everything just break down and it's going to be just simply delicious. I mean, I could taste this now because, you know, why not? Mm, so good. Very, very good. So I'm going to keep cooking this down. Here is my cabbage. Look at this. Little wilties. Look at this one. This perfect. They're all nice and wilted down. And all I did was add a little bit of salt to my cabbage. I didn't have to dirty a pot. I didn't have to do anything like that. Notice, look, I can bend this completely and it will not break. And that's how you do it. Delicious cabbage rolls. And you do want to rinse this off because I did put a lot of salt. Uh, but if you don't season your stuffing, you don't even have to rinse this out. Okay, it'll work. I'm just going to put that on top. Put this on top and that's going to keep doing its magic. All right, guys, I'll see you in a bit. I did chop up some sausage. It's cooking up now. And this is pretty much ready. But like I said, the more this squishes up together, almost like a mash, the better it is and easier it is for me to roll it. But if you don't have sausage at home, you could buy sausage these days. You could even buy a hamburger patty, break that up and throw that into your dish. Um, or if you make your own, let it be a bean burger, uh, any kind of sausage you make yourself, seitan, tofu, you could chop that up and you could add it to your mixture. So whatever you have, and remember, it doesn't have to be any seitan, it could also be just beans, it's going to be delicious. So very simple. Take leftovers and if you didn't have potatoes, maybe you had rice. That'll work for you. Very simple to do and always a new dish when you create something with some leftovers and nobody's going to say oh do i have to eat rice again no you're going to eat a different dish with the rice in it very simple <laughs> all right guys i'll see you in a bit i'm going to show you my cabbage i'm using uh, making kimchi with you can see that right at the bottom i'm not sure if you can see it there's all that liquid there there it is it's just sweating at this point you could squish it 
and it doesn't even break on you. And then I'll just add this to the mixture I already have. I'm not sure if you've ever gone out to buy kimchi. Number one, it's hard to buy, to find vegan kimchi, unless you're buying it online. Um, but you can make vegan kimchi like for like two, three dollars, rather than a little container that big for like 10 to 15 dollars. So, and it really doesn't take long. It's like make and forget, like chop it up, add some salt and just forget it. When you go back, you're gonna have both the cabbage to make kimchi. It goes in a jar and then it gets fermented. Very easy. Tomato. Okay, so here we go. While that's cooking, my stuffing is almost done. It is pretty much done. So I am going to stop it and let that cool off so I don't burn myself. Meanwhile, I'll show you what I'm going to do here. I have a tomato and I have two tomatoes that I made in 2021 still sealed and this is going to taste no different like the day I made it. It's a very fresh tasting tomato. We're going to start off with adding just a little bit of olive oil in my beautiful tagine. I could cut this tomato. It's on its last leg, but I like to use it rather than. Let me see, where's my other knife? Oh, yeah, let's see if this one's a little better. When the tomatoes get soft, a little harder to cut. But if you have a good knife, then you're good to go. Okay. All right, let me crack this open for shake it. Oh, did you hear that? Boom. Mm. I swear to God, if you taste this, it tastes like I just made it. Okay, we're just going to add a bit of it for now. And we're going to lay some tomato slices. And if I have leftover tomato, you could always use it in another dish. Maybe one more slice. Okay, and I'll show you something else I do, guys. I have a butt end. I do not get rid of it or throw it out. I take this, it goes into a little plastic bag, into my freezer, and when I have a whole bunch of them, I puree it, and then it becomes another pasada. Very easy. We don't waste anything. Okay. There we go. Let me just... And this was done in 2021. It tastes like the day I made it. Okay, this goes there. And am I gonna burn myself with this? Hopefully not. Maybe I'll cool it off first. Let me cool that off. Actually, I wanna throw some mozzarella in it first. Not gonna use a lot. Let me do it on here. Let's say about that much. Beautiful. Just so beautiful. 
And this is the lazy mozzarella. I didn't even make a milk. But I will show you my recipe on this. This is also going to help bind it a bit. Just break up that mozzarella and it's going to get incorporated in. And if you don't have any homemade mozzarella, you can buy cheese today. Today it's easy to be vegan. You can go to a store and there's all kinds of cheeses you can buy and use. Okay. Nice and gooey, this cheese. It's softer. But what you could do is freeze it, and then when you need it, you can use it on the pizza. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. Very good, this cheese. Okay, so I'll see you till this when this is cooled off, and we're going to start wrapping some of our cabbages. Okay, so let's try this and see if I can manage doing this without burning myself. Okay, I obviously need more than one cabbage to do these. Some are big and some are just smaller. Let's see what we can do. Remember if there's leftover, there's other things you could do with it. I did not rinse it because this doesn't have a lot of salt and neither does my Little baby cabbage rolls, guys. Boom. There's one right there. Erica's gonna be happy because she's been wanting cabbage rolls. Look at that gooey mozzarella there. Maybe too much for this one. That's the thing, when your cabbage isn't that big, you end up getting little cabbage rolls. And the trick to these is that you don't touch them. That's why I put tomatoes underneath. This makes it easier to use. You could even take some of this off. Where's my little knife? Throw it in for my kimchi. Beautiful little baby cabbages. But this broken one there, that should do the trick. Erica, you want to come and try the stuffing? Tell me if it's Erica approved. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. All with a little bit mm -hmm. of leftovers, eh? Mm -hmm. oh, that's so good. Okay, so this, I mean, you know, if you have a lot of people in your family, it's you know, you're going to need bigger cabbage leaves and a bigger pot. 
but for a family of two or three, I think this is more than enough. I would think anyhow. <laughs> Gotta get creative when you're Erica, can you uh, roll me some rice paper, please, if you don't mind? Uh, just uh, soak some rice paper for me. Sorry. We will have to probably use... Oh, that one's broken. So we shall add another cabbage leaf. Okay. That's that one. I'm gonna make a little one to fit there. Oh, these ones are breaking. Now give me three. So soak it now and pass it to you, or do you have you want to? Yes, do? please. Do you want it like? I just dunk it. And that's it. Wow, it's a little softer. Yes, dear. Yeah, bring it to me. Okay, so I didn't have enough cabbage, so this is what I'm doing here. Can you put it down? Thank you. We are going to use some cabbage, uh, some rice paper. To make the rest. I'm going to put one here. Maybe one more and that's it. Just that one, Erica. Okay. I think that should be good. nice and wet. Good. I'm not adding salt to this. Whoever doesn't find it salty enough can add their own salt. A little extra chili spice because we love the chili. And that's about it. I'm gonna add just a little extra tomato. I could always add extra tomato. You don't want to over overfill your your tagine, otherwise it's gonna spill everywhere. But this should be good. I'm gonna cover it, and this is gonna be ready for me to cook at dinner time. And now we have leftover. This is what's left over of my mixture by the way you could cook with a tagine it doesn't have to be in the oven you could cook it on the stove or you could put it in the oven but look at that mozzarella that I have going through there look at that look at that mozzarella she's beautiful I will have a recipe for you guys not right away but I have a few recipes that I want to show you I've got the roe cheese that I made uh, dedicated to my friend Richard and I have the mozzarella that I want to show you I have a lot of recipes but for now these are the two that are probably gonna end up coming sooner than later but uh, yeah I'll see you in a bit guys and I'll show you what dinner looks like Good. Ah, that's 
what I forgot. I forgot. Guess what I forgot, guys. Come on. Who's going to tell me what I forgot? Pause. And, because I'm going to say it. Pause. And then guess what I forgot. And then press click. I forgot to put the wine in my mixture. We'll have wine at dinner time. Ready to be cooked. I love you guys, and I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you a little later when you get to see what my dish looks like. See you in a bit. Let's see what this looks like. Oh my goodness! I wish you could smell this. Okay, I might steam you up. I'm not sure if this is. Eee, that's hot. I'm not sure this is a good idea. And there it is. <laughs> All steamed up. Sorry about that. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Steam up the camera. Dinner is served, guys. Let me shut this off. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, please. So there you go, guys. I hope you give it a try. Very easy to make, and even if you don't have a tagine, I'm sure you have some kind of ceramic dish that you can uh, make this in. As long as you've got about a couple of inches so you can add your sauce to it, it's going to come out perfect. So, I want to say I love you, thank you for following me, and guess what guys, I'm going to see you in my next video.